and we're back. And if you've been missing the comics content, thank you so much for missing me, but we're back. And by we're, I mean me, it's just me. But let's talk about some comics that I think you should definitely put in your pull box that are coming out soon. So baby's back and better than ever. It's me, I'm baby. This is an extra special episode because I was clearing out my fictional PR box. As in, yes, people sent me comics that they wanted to read, like this is my life. What? So let's talk about these comics, both of which I think that you're gonna wanna put in your pull box because they were so good. I'm so excited to talk to you about it. Let's join my reading club. It's just comics. Let's just read some comics together. The first of the comics that I wanna talk to you about is called Finger Guns. Now I read issue one and two of Finger Guns, so I have a little bit of a better understanding than of course having just read one issue. That's how reading works. Uh, for what this comic is like, and here's what I loved about it. It is, as far as my little brain can tell, a completely unique idea. And it is that teens can control other people's emotions by pointing finger guns at them. I feel weird doing that to camera, but it's what the comic's about which sounds pretty darn cool, but of course there are consequences. And as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, are these teens ready for the responsibility of being able to manipulate the people around them? And the teenagers that we're talking about are Sadie and Wes, and they're both extremely likable right off the bat. For all the things they have in common, they're incredibly different. You know, Sadie comes from a family where her father is abusive. Wes comes from a place where his father is never there. And it's just sort of sad, and they're able to bond over the things that they lack and the things that they wish they had, and just a sort of really touching friendship. And I really, really enjoyed it. I feel now like I will protect it with my life, because I think it's really sweet that they find solace in one another. This comic, the little preview on Previews World, promises a lot. It promises laughs and tears and teenage angst. And having read two issues of it already, I want more. I think that it will deliver on those things and I really liked it. I already saw character growth and reflection and I thought it was so cool. So not only is the idea really awesome and also it's beautiful, it just, it really grips you in. And I read both of these comics like so fast and then I went back and read them all over again because I, I, didn't, I didn't want it to end. So I'm really excited for you to also feel that way and, and want to read them and be voracious for more like I am. And I also think it's super cool that one of the writers, Justin Richards, is from Oregon. So if you're from Oregon, I'm here in Oregon, if you didn't know how I'm in Portland, uh, it's super cool. I'm really excited to see what Sadie and Wes decide to do with their powers and if there are more people out there like them because it just so happens that they ran into one another. It seemed that fate played some sort of role. Destiny, if you will. <laughs> So Finger Guns number one hits stores February 26th, so put it into your pull box and then, I don't know, tweet me or something and tell me what you thought about it because I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Also, uh, the team will be at Emerald City Comic Con if you're headed there, so you can also, you know, chat with the people who wrote this super awesome comic. Very cool. And the second comic that I read is called Join the Future. And it's a doozy of a sci-fi book. The premise is something that I think is so cool. Basically, the last vestiges of people are living in the Midwest in these towns that have absolutely no electronics. So kind of throwing it back, uh, think cowboy western. You know. And that's because it's juxtaposed to these things called mega cities, where it seems like every luxury that you could want is afforded to you. Education, healthcare, homes, and food. But there's obviously a catch for these people to be living the way that they're living without any modern conveniences, without medicine. Sounds like there's some famine. And the first issue of Join the Future doesn't exactly go into why there are tensions between the city and the people who want to live free, but oh boy, are there tensions. And I mean, I can't really fault the small town people because would you trust this? It's creepy. But as those tensions rise, the megacities seem to not be playing peacefully anymore. It doesn't look like they're trying to just convince people to come from the small towns into the megacity because something terrible happens. And I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I felt emotional and it was just the first issue. I thought, this was com I thought this comic was so cool because I was immediately immersed in the world and I am very here for this sort of dystopian society versus the small 
you know, like, uh, what is it, David versus Goliath is the word I'm looking for, essentially. Um, and it seems like maybe our protagonist, Clementine, who seems pretty cool, uh, may be the only person left in the small town. Is she gonna go up against the megacity? Is she bent on revenge? I don't know, but I wanna read more to find out. I, I really, really liked this comic. I thought the idea was super cool, and I think that there's really a place for a story like this right now. The idea of, um, I don't know, this dystopian society, west world ish I guess, kind of-ish situation. I don't know, it's really cool. And I'm familiar with Zach Kaplan. I really liked his book, Lost City Explorers, and he's a Jacksonville native. And if you don't know, I used to work in Jacksonville, Florida before I came here to good old Portland, Oregon. So us Floridians have to stick together while the rest of the country is making fun of the state we are from. I didn't say it wasn't warranted. Anyways, put this in your pull box. I really want to talk to you about it. It comes out March 4th. It is super cool. It is some parts Western, some parts futuristic. Finding a way to blend those things together pretty seamlessly. I'm really excited for what the future holds for Clem. Wow, what a great week for books and reading for me. I can't wait for it to be a great week of books and reading for you. So, you know, bug your local comic book shops to order them. Um, the order dates for both of these comics have technically passed, but you know, call, see what you can do and then put it in your pull box and yeah, read it, tell me about it. Okay, great. And so this is the part of the show where I talk to you about uh, what I put into my pull box for next week so we can maybe read it together. I'm gonna tell you what I put in there, but I just wanna let you know that I am going on vacation, which I never do, but my mom and my stepdad and my grandma are all coming from Florida. And we're gonna go do some snow stuff because they're from Florida and they wanna do snow stuff. So, uh, you know, uh, I may not be here to give you like a review on those comics that I read, but I'm gonna read them anyway. And so I'll just let you know what I'm getting, I guess. So I put in Plunge from DC Hill House Comics. Now the other DC Hill House comic that I read, uh, Daphne Byrne, I liked, it was very creepy, so I'm ready to get real spooky. And I like the premise of this. Basically a ship went down 40 years ago and uh, now it's sending out a distress signal. I like the movie Ghost Ship, don't at me. So I hope it has some ghost shipness. That's the entire reason I put it in my box. I'm also picking up Wolverine number one. We'll see if this Wolverine solo keeps my attention. I feel like every time I pick up a Wolverine solo, I pretty quickly put it down and not because I dislike Wolverine, I like Wolverine. I just, uh, I don't know, it's just like one more thing to keep up with. I really like this sort of X-Men reboot that started with Hickman's Powers of 10 and House of X, but I am having a hard time keeping up because I don't know, I'm bad at it. So I'm gonna give it a go, we'll see. And the last I'm getting bang, again with the finger guns. Uh, from <laughs> from the description on Previews World, it's Archer meets Agatha Christie meets Hercule Poirot, and also drugs that turn you, give you powers of some sort. I don't know, it seems really cool. Promises action, and mystery, and altered reality, and we'll see if we get any of that. But it sounded pretty interesting, so I guess I'll let you know. And now for your nerd news in 60 seconds. This was pre-recorded, so I'm gonna have different clothes on. Just felt like I needed to warn you. Hi, I'm Destiny Johnson, and I have so many feelings about the Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, or as it's now known, Harley Quinn, colon, Birds of Prey, exclamation point. We're gonna talk about the name change and everything else you need to know for your Nerd News in 60 Seconds. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn is now known in movie theaters as Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. And I think that's for SEO purposes, because even though this movie is really liked by critics and viewers with an 80% score on Rotten Tomatoes, it had a little bit of a disappointing opening according to box office standards. Whatever, don't let that dissuade you from seeing this movie. In my opinion, it's the best DC movie since the gritty Batman. You know, if we don't see this movie, the Joker wins. Sorry, Christian Bale. It's Deadpool in heels. It's funny, it's violent, it filled me with so much womanly confidence, and you can tell at every turn in this movie that it was a movie written about women, by women, and not just white women. It was incredible, and I think you'll really enjoy it. We deserve female baddies like all the ones that we saw in Birds of Prey. So go to your theater this weekend and check out Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. Not only did I like it, but famed writers of Birds of Prey are really enjoying it, including Gail Simone. 
the queen of Twitter, as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, it's not just my opinion. People who write and love these characters also loved the movie. Go check it out for yourself. You will not be disappointed. I liked it better than Wonder Woman. That's right, I said it, and I'm not taking it back. This has been your Nerd News in 60 Seconds, but don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash kgwcomics, where I talk about all manners of nerd news that you can use. That's, you know, comics and movies, sometimes like video games, like D&D. &D. I react to movie trailers with friends. I also review movies. I also talk to you all about the stuff coming out in the comic book stores. It's just a lot, a lot of nerd going on. I'd love for you to be there. Thanks so much. <laughs>